Hello there! In today's video, I'm going to show you how I create acrylic pour jewelry without using metal cabochon trays. First, let me start by telling you what an acrylic pour skin is. I am an artist that loves to create all sorts of different things. In acrylic pour painting, I create art using multiple colors of paint poured simultaneously together. Whether that be on a canvas substrate or a metal substrate or any substrate that I choose, I tilt the paint or the substrate to get a specific desired look. And when doing so, the paint drips over the edges. The paint is caught on what I lay down underneath there, utilizing freezer paper with the glossy side up. Therefore, when the paint dries, I can easily peel what is now considered a skin off of the freezer paper. So, here are some paintings that some of my skins have come from. The last photo coming up here of an elk is the skin that I am using in this video to show you how I made a set of earrings. So, stay tuned and have a watch. Uh, earrings, so that you can kind of see my process. So I use Sun and Moon Craft Glaze. And uh, so what I do, again, I'm one-handed right now because I have not been able to purchase one of the uh, uh, gadgets that will hold my phone while I video. So basically what I do is I just put a little bit of the glaze on the bottom of, or one side of the, uh, one side of the glass tile. And then what I do is I turn it over and I kind of will place it uh, before I actually lay it down. But anyway, once I lay it down, I just kind of move it back and forth a little bit so that the glaze is underneath all areas and then I press down pretty good to make sure that there's no air bubbles and you'll see a little bit of glaze got on there but it's fine you'll be able to get it off quite easily once it's dry and then I'm going to go ahead and do the same to the second one and I want to try to duplicate the pattern of which I chose so if you see how this one's kind of going across that way, that's kind of what I want to emulate on the second one. So here we go. I'm going to do it right here. Okay. And then basically you're just going to let it, let it sit here um, for a while to dry. And then once it is dry, I just take a pair of cuticle scissors and I cut out the pieces. You'll see it's kind of rough edged here. I just cut around the tile. And then I will take a emery board to it and just smooth out the rough edges. And then once I've done that, let me... Actually, um, oh, here we go. I have one that's already, oh no, that's not done. Well, I actually have one that's done, so maybe you'll be able to see. Okay, so, um, you see this? So this is a bale, a jewelry bale, also from Sun and Moon Crafts. And what I do, once, once the skin dries, I give it like at least a day or more to dry and then I just flip it over. I'm going to show you this one that's already been done. I just flip it over and I work the glaze. I put more glaze on it. You can see this is shiny. Okay. So I basically work the glaze all the way around the edges. Let me see if I can have a bigger one here to show you. So all the way around the edges um, and then the center. And then I basically lay the bale right down into the glaze itself so that it actually 
uh, is adhered with the glaze and you don't have to use some kind of uh, alternate glue. Uh, it will just, um, like I, a lot of people use E6000, but if you, if you just lay it right into the glaze, it'll dry into there and then it's not going anywhere. I mean, you could, you could push on it for days and it's not gonna go anywhere. So here would be a finished, um, a finished pendant for me. And of course I have to, whoops, um, let it uh, dry another day or two. And then it's ready to basically have a, um, a necklace run through it, whether it be, I use ribbon ones a lot, um, leather corded necklaces, I'll run through them. Anyway, on these, I actually have from, again, Sun and Moon Crafts, um, so that bale right here, when it comes to the time that I flip these over and cut them out, and put the glaze on the back side of them, I will adhere the bales to the back, most likely at the top here. Uh, I will add that and then add the findings once the glaze has all dried. Um, well, I don't know that I have any earrings to show you. I think I just took them to the store that I sell them at. So anyway, so that's kind of what I do. Uh, maybe when I have some that are actually ready to have the glaze on the back side of them and adding the bale, I will do another quick video on that. Um, or actually I might try to attach, do one now and attach it to this video before I post it. Okay, have a great day. Okay, I am back with the back side of an already dried pendant. So I'm just gonna kinda show you as best as I can with one hand how I do this. Okay. Okay. So basically I just squeeze some out and I just kind of work it to the edge because you, you want to make sure that the edge where the acrylic skin meets the glass tile is actually covered and sealed. So, of course, one-handed, this wants to turn around on me. So, best I can, I'll just get her done. And... So sometimes all you gotta do is barely just tap on the edge to get that seal right along the very edge where the skin meets the glass. And then just kind of fill in here. It'll all pretty much level itself out. Sorry, I need to invest in something to hold my phone while I do these videos. Um, right up along the edge here. Okay. And then just fill in this area here. Now I'm not necessarily pushing or squeezing any more out. I'm just kind of joining um, joining the two sides. Okay, so now it's all covered. And so now what I'll do is I will just uh, take the bale. Okay, and I will just lay it right there, right in the middle. And then you'll see it's kind of wants to be top heavy. And um, if that's the case, then what I basically do is I just find something that I can use to prop up that. Yikes. That's a little too much. So 
Something I can use to prop up the bale while it dries. Sorry. Okay. There we go. Okay. So then I'll just take my scissors and kind of press down on that bale. Make sure it's all centered and looking good. And then I'll leave it there to dry. And then once it's dry, it's ready for a necklace to go right through it. And the kind of the cool thing about this is people can wear it either side, honestly. So um, let me fix this right here. Uh, yeah, so depending on what design they like on the back or the front, change with their moods wherever they want it to go but again this will take you know about a day to well less than a day but at least a day to dry and it will dry clear and you'll be ready to wear it okay thank you everybody and if you like this video please like and share if you'd like and subscribe if you're not already have a great day